If you're only recording maybe up to one episode a week, then maybe you don't care. Maybe you don't mind doing it on its own. Like with Zoom, I can record six episodes a week and every single guest has their own link. I don't ever have any randos jumping into an interview and interrupting me. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. Recently, I've been having a lot of people ask me which software to use because there's a ton. And if you go to like Facebook, for example, everybody's poo-pooing on the one that I use, which is all good. The point is that there's some pros and cons with different platforms and it's possible to work with different platforms Different ones cost different amounts of money. Different ones have higher or lower quality. Some other pros and cons with ease of use, echoes, and things like that. And that's really what I want to talk about. I want to narrow this down. I want to give you just a few of the platforms that are pretty popular right now. I'm going to give you four. And I'll talk with you about Squadcast, Riverside, Skype, and Zoom. So just be thinking in your head, You know, what are some of the top ones that most people are using? A significant amount of the podcast hosts who are doing virtual interviews with their host, or if they're co-hosting and they're not in the same place, they're probably going to be using one of these four platforms, or at least 90% of them are using one of these four platforms. And the others are a little less known, perhaps less reliable or less known. And so just let's talk about this. Zoom, Skype, Riverside, Squadcast, a couple of ideas. So first and foremost, which one has the best quality? Arguably, a lot of people say that Riverside, now you got to hear me out, please. A lot of people say Riverside has the highest quality. There is a but. Were you already sensing a but? A lot of people think that Riverside has the highest quality, but here's the issue. Time and time again, and I've had multiple clients that had um, a couple different people on their group where they had two or three or four hosts, and they tried to use Riverside. One of the big issues that they had with it is that it was very challenging to be able to have Riverside supposed to tout as, or they tout themselves as like the top quality, right? But in actuality, what ends up happening is a lot of my clients have been trying to work with Riverside because they hear this stuff like, don't use this platform, Riverside's the best. And then they end up using it and have extremely bad audio quality. And one of the reasons there's this echo thing that happens a lot of times when you have two or three or four <laughs> different people on, it can be very challenging. Whereas for some weird reason, and oftentimes, even if everybody's wearing headphones, which the headphones typically help to make sure that you're not going to have that echo, that reverb, that recycling in where one person's voice somehow gets in and repeats itself. And it doesn't sound good at all. So Riverside's like, oh yeah, we have these huge audio files. And because we have these giant audio files that are a lot of memory and a lot of time. That's a benefit, they'll say, but it's not always perfect. It's honestly not always perfect. At least at the time that I'm recording this, I was just listening to some clients of mine that, well, it's one group with one podcast and there's four women and just all sorts of problems. They tried Riverside and now they've definitely moved on. They're not using it anymore. So two of the women in that group from that podcast, two of the women are canceling their Riverside forever they're so pissed with it. They just do not like how it's working. On the other hand, there are some good things about Riverside. One of the cool things that I like is when you have like an internet glitch, whenever there's a random glitch on one person's end, what often happens is the person speaking will, on some of the other platforms, that person speaking when they have an internet glitch, it's going to come across and it's going to be recorded as a bad glitch. On a lot of these other platforms, Riverside generally doesn't do that. Why is it different? Because whenever you have Riverside, it records the audio file directly to your computer. And so it saves it in almost in real time. It's basically 90% or more upload uh, ready to go at any given point. The cool thing is it records it directly on the computer. 
And then as soon as you're done, then it upload the whole file. So what is the benefit? The benefit is you don't have, you generally won't have these internet breaks, even if let's say you're the host and your guest is the one who cut out on a lot of the other platforms that cut out will be part of the recording. But when you're using Riverside, that pause, that silence, that internet lag ends up being recorded in better quality than even you as the host heard your guest because they were recording directly to their computer locally. And then it was uploaded. What's another con to using Riverside? Well, going back to these same four women that have a great podcast, we've been working with them to launch a podcast and and it's awesome. An issue that they ran into is that they had all four on, they were recording their trailer episode weeks back. The trailer is the short episode that just gets people excited about the whole show. And all four of them were there and we planned on taking about an hour and it ended up because there's so many different voices, there was four of us and so many different opinions and it didn't go as quickly as it could have because everybody had something to throw in. Plus, we had to make sure the mics were working. Plus, we had a pause. Plus, When I do those coaching calls, when I help people record their trailer episode for my clients, I need to hear what types of mistakes that person is making. Then I coach them on those mistakes. We get rid of those mistakes. If you just have one host, if you just got one person that's hosting it, you correct those mistakes and you're good to go. When you have four people, they all have their own mistakes. And sometimes two of them might make the same mistake, but the one person just didn't listen when you corrected the other person before them. And so what was interesting is we were working and working and working. What's the point, Adam? Well, ended up that one of the ladies needed to, ended up having an appointment that she needed to jump off a little bit early. And so she needed to jump off, I think it was Riverside, and then jump onto a new Riverside. (sighs) This was a frustrating mistake that happens really only on Riverside. You have to stay logged into Riverside until maybe about a minute, give or take. You know, it could be a few seconds, it could be five, 10 minutes. But usually you have to stay on for about a minute after you record. And after that full minute ish or 30 seconds or 10 minutes ends up happening, then your file gets uploaded. A cool thing about Riverside is you got four different tracks. So, well, there was five of us. So I was recorded on one track. Well, my team just deleted me because I don't need to be on their podcast. And then three of the ladies, their portion of the recording was uploaded and perfect. But this one lady who had to go to another meeting and she logged off early, what do you think happened? All of her audio never went to the cloud. So if your guest... Or if you forget, or if your internet goes out while you're recording Riverside and you've got to reset your computer or your guest has to reset their computer, you completely lose everything because it was recording locally. But as soon as you logged off, logged out, got kicked out, internet went down, computer shut off because of an update, your whole file's gone. You got to leave the episode. She only left like five minutes early. And she only left like five minutes before we were completely done. And because she wasn't there for a minute after we finished her whole stuff, we had to record everything again. That won't happen with some of these other platforms. What's another drawback for Riverside is that Riverside doesn't integrate very well right now, at least at the time that I'm recording this, Riverside doesn't integrate very well with your calendar. What I mean by that is, If you want your guest to automatically book on your online calendar where they can just go in and they can see your availability because it's all connected actually to your Google Calendar, for example, your Apple Calendar, whatever. With Riverside, it's not going to propagate or generate a unique link. It's not going to generate a new link just for that meeting. Your only options are A and B. Your only options when using Riverside and trying to schedule these events, these interviews with other people, your only real possibilities or options are A, you've got to always give somebody your personal link, which means everybody who's ever been on your show has your personal link. 
And the next time you're interviewing somebody, let's say you've got two interviews today. This has happened to me a lot of times. This is a real problem because it actually has happened to me and it got frustrating. That's one of the reasons why I don't use Riverside or other companies that you always have to give everybody your personal link. Because the other problem is if they end up like you're recording at 11 a.m. and you've got a noon appointment coming up, for example. This has happened to me a half a dozen times, probably five times. That other person who wants to just test the link an hour before it starts, they just randomly jump into your meeting. They change the flow, they F it up. And all of a sudden you're like, I was on a rhythm. I knew what I was doing and you jumped in, you interrupted. I don't even remember my train of thought anymore because you used my personal link when I wasn't ready. Your past people can just jump into your personal link. If somebody wanted to mess with you, they could give that personal link to dozens or two people, a hundred people. They could send it to their whole email list of a million people. If somebody really wanted to mess with you, they could give your personal link to a lot of different people and they could be jumping in your personal link all the time. And that could get real frustrating. And it has been frustrating for me in the past. So there's pros there's cons. It is absolutely the best quality of all of these platforms that I know of, but it isn't perfect. And if you're already paying for another platform and money's tight, why pay for two? So I don't love Riverside for that reason. If it was able to integrate with my calendar, I would probably be very open to it. If Riverside didn't have that issue that you've got to make sure that everybody stays on after you're done recording, even if they've got a meeting, if it wasn't possible for somebody to have a, an update on their computer and then you completely lose the whole thing. If those problems didn't happen with Riverside, I would probably be more of an advocate for it. Also, the echoes. The echoes are, they can get really, really bad. And it especially happens when you have multiple people. If you've got two people, you're probably going to be safe. But if you have three or four or five people, you're going to get this echo that is terrible. So what other things might there be? There are some reasons to use Riverside and there's some absolutely, please understand, there are a lot of reasons also to not use Riverside. There's pros and cons to everything. Another one is Skype. Another option for you to use is Skype. Skype's been around for a long, long time. Skype has been tested. Skype has a lot of good. Why wouldn't you use it? Sometimes if somebody doesn't have a Skype account, they don't know how to use it. They can't find it. It also doesn't integrate with your calendar. And I think that there is an absolute potential for a lag, especially if somebody has weak internet or if they're in a place with weak internet. So Skype, I'm just saying, kick it to the curb. We all know about it. Most of us have heard about it. More than half of us have used it a time or two, especially if we're older, even younger generation, maybe they're like, Skype? What is that? So the third one that I'll talk about, these are in no particular order, really. They're not like the best and the worst. They're all options and they all have pros and cons. Skip Skype unless your other person just uses Skype. They don't have a Skype account. They're probably not going to be able to use it. Zoom is the next one that I will uh, share with. You can get a free account, which lasts, I think, for 40 minutes right now. As, as I'm recording this, the free account means that you can have one type of, what's the word for it? You have one type of event, I guess, that is on the calendar. And it could just be your podcast as the event. It has a maximum recording time of 40 minutes. Uh, if you pay for it, then you can have multiple different types of events on there. So you can have coaching calls, you can have discovery calls, you can have podcast interviews for your first podcast, podcast interviews for your other podcast, podcast interviews for your third podcast, if you have that many. And they can go unlimited amounts of time. But as far as like the memory of Zoom, it can be also limited. What is a drawback? What's a drawback of Zoom? I've got some real pros and hint, hint, hint. I use Zoom. So I'm going to share a couple of drawbacks and then the pros. Drawback number one is the audio and the video are, the word for it is compressed. The file or the memory or how much content is there, they basically compress it. So they put as much of the recording into as small of a file as possible. And what that can do is that can lower your potential, that can lower the ability for you to have more options later. So if you're editing it, 
you have a compressed file. And another word for a compressed file is a small file. Uh, I believe, in my opinion, that the audio quality is enough. I'm recording this on Zoom right now. And how do I sound? Is Does this sound like I'm a kindergartner trying to record a podcast for my first time? No. Zoom is good enough. The video quality, which video files, MP4 type of files are gigantic. There's so much memory that goes into it, especially if you've got a 2K or 4K camera, then these files can just go get outrageous. With an hour long recording, these files can be so huge of memory. Zoom makes it faster and easier by dumbing down the video. This is where I think that they lack the most is the video quality. Because if you bought yourself a 2K or 4K camera, awesome, good for you. You bought your 2K or 4K camera and you think you're recording in 2K or 4K, but if you're using Zoom, unfortunately, the quality with Zoom compresses it. So it's like you're using a much smaller type of file. You're going to be a little bit more blurry or fuzzy. It's not going to move. It's not going to have as many frames per second. It's going to be enough. It's going to be good enough for most people. But if your main thing is, I need to have really good video, you're not going to find extremely good video on Zoom. But I use Zoom. I like it. It has good enough video, especially for my needs. My audio experience is the experience that I care about the most. And Zoom's pretty freaking good. I do the paid version. We have an upgraded account. It translates and transcribes everything for you. So you basically, you can pull a transcription immediately of everything that was said. And it even goes as far as saying who said it. So if you got two or three or four people on the podcast at the same time, it shows, it basically takes a transcript of which microphone that it came from. So you, let's just say you've got Pam on mic one saying X, Y, Z, and you've got Adam on mic two saying one, two, three. Then when Pam talks, it says, Pam said, and then it gives the words that she has. And then when I talk, it says, Adam said, and it gives the transcription. It's pretty freaking cool. And it comes with that upgraded version automatically. And what else? So one drawback was that the audio quality and video quality are a little lower. The internet issues, any internet issue that you experience if using Zoom, especially like if it's on your guest for this episode, you've got your guest and they say something, but they get cut off because their internet is a little slow and you hear it on your end that they blanked out for a few seconds or for a minute or whatever it is, then that's literally going to be recorded. So going back to Riverside, it doesn't get recorded. It still sounds perfect. On Zoom, it gets recorded and it becomes part of the recording. On the pros, just to give you a couple of pros, the calendar integration is amazing. So Zoom is one of the very few companies that easily connect with any Google or Apple calendar, meaning if I have like Calendly and people book call for through Calendly, it propagates or it generates its own unique link. It'll be a new link instead of, I don't have to give everybody my personal link. It automatically integrates with calendar. If I wanted to do that with any of these other platforms, if I want to do this with any other platform and I, I want people to not have my personal link, I want them to have a uniquely generated link. I have to go and do extra work or have my assistant do a lot of extra work by going into whatever calendar it got created at. And then they have to go and change the calendar or send a bunch of emails with this new link. On other platforms, on Zoom, it's a unique link every single time because it's connected to my calendar and it's so helpful. So one of the huge pros is just the calendar integration. You can't get that with any other platform. This is one of the reasons why I use Zoom. If you're only recording maybe up to one episode a week, then maybe you don't care. Maybe you don't mind doing it on its own, like going in and finding its own link. But with Zoom, I can record six episodes a week and every single guest has their own link. I don't ever have any randos jumping into an interview and interrupting me. The calendar integration is huge. The second one is that you have less missed interviews. Reason why is because Zoom's pretty popular. A lot of companies have been using it. I think they put a lot of money in a few years ago back when COVID was happening and people were working from their office. Zoom 
became kind of that place that everybody knew about, everybody used, everybody tried. A lot of podcasters have used it. And as an end result, more people know and understand what Zoom is, have Zoom. Uh, Zoom can also be used either on the internet, just without even having the app downloaded on your computer or your phone. You can actually access these meetings directly from a web browser too. So a lot less missed interviews. People are not going to miss your interviews, A, because it's in the freaking calendar for them. It's right in front of them. And B, because they already know what Zoom is. They know where to find it. They know what it's like. They don't have to download anything ahead of time like they do on some of the other platforms. And for the most part, everyone can really use it. It's really, really simple. And so those are some of the pros that I like about it. I think that it can be free if you want it to be free. And let's talk about the cons of Zoom and just ways that I get around it because I understand that these are cons. So let's talk about the audio compression. I don't give a crap. The audio compression, the audio is great. I don't need to change it. Let's talk about the video compression. I don't care how great my video is. If I got video and it's decent and Zoom is plenty good. That's great. But what about the internet issues that get recorded? That is a huge thing that most of us are, we freak out about. Well, guess what I do? If I have you as my guest today, let's just say you're my guest and I'm asking you questions and your internet all of a sudden messes up and I can't hear you for 30 seconds, that does happen with bad internet. I might not be able to hear you. What do you think I do? I just say, hey, I couldn't hear you for 30 seconds. I don't know what you said after I asked XYZ question. Let's go back there and get this back on the recording. What else do I do? Well, I go ahead of time to my guest that's going to be on my podcast. And I say ahead of time, I get them to click boxes, check links, uh, double check with them. I do sometimes a pre-interview with somebody and I will make sure that their internet is stable enough that it's going to be able to record so that there's less chance of having them disappear for a few seconds. So I make sure that they have good, stable internet in the first place. And when it gets recorded and has the break, the pause, the disappearing, Rather than just ignoring it and having a shitty recording, I specifically say, hey, I didn't hear you. Let's go back there. And then I'll say something to my audio editing team. I will tell the audio editing team that I'm going to pause. I'll say, hey, you know, we're going to cut this out or we're going to edit it out. I'll, I'll say something like that. And then I'll come back in and I'll talk to my guest and I'll say, when we come back in, I want you to start at this place. This is the last thing that I heard you say. I want you to start there and I'll have my audio editing team just splice out the part that sucked and put it together and it's going to sound perfect. So that's why for the most part, 98% of my recordings sound great, even though let's say only 70% of them get recorded great. We just re-record that part that got um, messed up. So that's how I get over some of the cons with Zoom. And there's one other platform that we can talk about right after this message. Hey, my friend, as you know, this episode is sponsored by my company, growyourshow.com. We want you to be able to have the best tools at your disposal without costing you a whole arm and a leg. So right now you can get a free list of vetted equipment that like mics, mixers, webcams, sound treatment, editing software, everything that you need. I created the whole PDF with direct purchase links just to save you time and money to help it be more convenient for you. So this free PDF will help you skip all the guesswork. If it's on there, it's vetted and approved by yours truly. And if it's not on there, it's probably not worth the money. So go ahead and get yours at growyourshow.com forward slash PDF. Let's get back into the show. We're back. We're talking about audio recording software. And the best ones to use if you are interviewing other people or you have co-hosts and you're doing these things virtually. We talked a little bit about Skype and we talked a little bit about Riverside and we talked a little bit about Zoom. We went over these three platforms already. And there's another platform I didn't save necessarily the last for the best. These are in no particular order. You already know I use Zoom, but there's a pretty cool another platform that is out that a little bit fewer people know about. I think Riverside does an amazing job with paid ads, with marketing. You know that 97% of successful companies get successful by 
advertising. And Riverside probably puts a lot of dollars out into uh, getting in front of people. But there's other group, this other place called Squadcast is pretty remarkable. They have, as I'm recording this, I understand that they have two different ways of working. Squadcast can be in audio editing and it's about half the price. If you want it only audio, they do a great job. They have everything you really need and it's just audio. Or if you double the price, and it's not that much, it's like 20 and 40 bucks, I think. When you double the price, and that price could change. I'm recording this in the year of 2024. Uh, so in 2034, those exact numbers are no longer going to be valid, but you can just go to Squadcast and look them up and you can find their new pricing. As I record this, the last pricing I remember seeing is like around 20 for audio only and around 40 for audio and video. And if you're going to be putting things on YouTube, which I do put things on YouTube, it could be a benefit for you to be working with one of these companies like Riverside, even though they do have so many things against them, or like Squadcast, because they have a pretty strong, larger recording file, which can allow you to be able to use your 4K camera with that higher amount of resolution and not waste it. Like you kind of waste it a little bit with Zoom. With Squadcast, it's not as many people know it. So that's kind of a drawback. If at all possible, you want to use something that people are used to. And that's another reason why I use Zoom. But Squadcast has really good video quality, really good audio quality, and it can help you to be able to go in and actually produce some really great content with great quality. And so I wanted to mention it as well. Look up these four. Think about them. I would say if you want the best of the best audio quality, but with some drawbacks of maybe losing your files completely, Riverside. I would say if you want just ease of use, making sure that everybody can make it on your podcast, I'll probably use Zoom. And if you want kind of a hybrid where a lot of people can find it, a lot of people can figure it out, and it has great quality, but you still got to do some of the calendar integration is not there. So you still have to do a little bit of that extra work. It may be worth it for you because you really want that YouTube 4K camera to come out. Maybe use Squadcast. You don't usually get the same type of echoing, that really bad echo when you have multiple people on Squadcast as I've seen on Riverside. So it can kind of be a little bit of a, of a benefit. So with that said, those are a few of the top platforms, probably 90% of the people out there would be there. And if you pick either of these, any of these, you're not going to go wrong. They will all work. They will all work just fine. I love Zoom and they're not paying me to say that. It makes my life easy for the reasons that we've already mentioned on this. So in this episode, we talked about uh, four different platforms that are very popular out there that all, most of the people use. And we talked about some of the pros and cons. I'm not going to cover them again, but it was Zoom. It was Skype. It was Riverside and it was Squadcast. Don't go away. I will see you on the next episode. Oh, hey, because three of my clients came to me recently looking to find a way to have their podcast make the money instead of cost them money. We put together a resource for some of our clients and I want to give it to you as well. It's something that did actually seem to help because one of them is now making $2,600 a month. Another one's $4,500 a month. And the third is making between 5,000 and 10,000 each month. And so it's been a resource that's been incredibly valuable to them. It's our sponsor sheet template. It's a template of a sponsor sheet and it gives you something that you can hand to potential sponsors and hopefully also be making 2,600, 4,500 or between five and 10K regularly each month with your podcast. So this has been a contributing factor to helping all three of those clients turn their podcast into an additional income stream for them. And the way that you can find it is just going to our website, growyourshow.com, but put in forward slash templates, growyourshow.com forward slash templates. And then you can actually download that template and others that could be valuable to your podcasting experience. I'll see you on the next episode.